I've been talking about since the beginning of 2022, our theme this year is making your business better. And one of the, there are a lot of different kinds of ways to do that. And I'm going to kind of in the beginning talk about the more conceptual ways to build your sphere. And then at the kind of second half of this meeting, we're going to get into some actual like tricks and little hacks that we can do. So first let's define your sphere. Right, the, your sphere, if you haven't yet heard this term and you're new in real estate, your sphere of influence, SOI, is a really big term because what it represents is all of the people that you know. So that's any loose connection, any acquaintance, anyone at all. It could be your mailman, the person that does your nails, it could be your neighbors, your friends, your family's friends, and all those people, right? Your waitress. Your waitress. Maria has sold lots of real estate yeah. to her servers. <laughs> the people sitting at the table next to you at a restaurant, that's Ronnie. Yeah. That's right. That's totally Ronnie. Okay. So here's the deal. Success in sales. It's about getting in front of the right people at the right time. So it's also about influencing them on what to do and making that move, making that change. That's, that's essentially the definition of sales, right? It's not necessarily telling them what to buy, but it's helping them make that change, make that decision. So most people don't necessarily have the swag or the mindset to use their sphere and to benefit from it and build their business. So today we're going to talk about how you can kind of build up that mindset, anything just like um, a muscle, you can make it stronger. It's the same thing with your mindset. It's the same thing with how you approach your business. You can build it up and make it better and make it stronger. Most importantly, I want you guys to remember it doesn't happen overnight. This is one of those things when it comes to your sphere. And this is when I first got started in real estate, I was so frustrated because I was told to work my sphere and it didn't like, I didn't have any results or I didn't feel that immediate gratification. And I felt so frustrated and frankly, I gave up and I went to work for a company that gave me leads. Now, I don't want you guys to do that. Yes, work your leads. Absolutely. Cause I always felt like I could control that more, but with your spheres, you actually can control it if you do it consistently. And if you understand and expect that you're going to have to constantly nurture it. It's not going to be a one and done. You're not going to make one phone call and get that client. So essentially the way that I like to think of it is it's like a little sapling, little tree that you're planting. It requires a lot of the right nurturing, right? The water and the sunlight and over years it will grow and get bigger and bigger. Like Maria, you're one of my favorite examples because when we met like six years ago, your business was very different than it is today, but you've been nurturing it. And now it's almost like a referral machine where you keep getting referrals now because of all of those efforts that you've been putting in consistently. So the goal is, especially if you're newer, start with- There might be some people in the waiting room. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I think that um, they're able to let them in, Bridget and Desiree. Okay, because there it's like two people that have reached out. Reached out. So. Especially if you're new or you've never done a transaction, one of the best ways to do your first transaction is work with people that already like you and trust you, right? Even if they're not, and if they're not buying now, they eventually will buy. So your goal in this, this sapling nurturing of this tree is to make sure that the people that know you and trust you, when they are ready to buy, you're the one that they're going to work with. So let's talk about specific steps on how to do that. So step one, I was told to do this 100 years ago, and I know it sounds, oh, sounds awful. Look at the color. Well, all this says, it's a list of all of the people that know you. And so step one, I actually want you to go through the exercise of thinking about everyone. So what this list says that you maybe can't see that well is it's everything from, hold on, your family, your friends, your neighbors, um, people from college, from school, high school, elementary school, your place of worship, any sports teams, your masseur, masseuse. 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 Um, I don't know if you guys have a masseuse. <laughs> you do? Well, is he buying real estate? I'm just kidding. Your mechanic, your, your electrician, your doctor, your dentist, any, anyone and everyone essentially is somebody that's in your nail lady, all of those people are. So step one is just conceptualize this big group of people around you. Like you're in the middle and all these people are around you. That is your sphere. Okay, that's step one. Step two is outreach. We're gonna talk at the end about some other hacks for outreach, but this is actually probably the most important step and the step that you really can't take any shortcuts with. 
And what I mean is, is I don't want you doing it in a way that isn't authentic. I want you doing it in a way where it actually is personalized, where you're actually caring about that person and making sure, and you're trying to um, create a connection with whoever it is that you're speaking to. Um, you're trying to build more trust. So once you have this list put together of anyone that you know, what, whatever version of reaching out, right? The fo phone call is covered. But I understand that not everybody is someone you necessarily want to call. Um, can you mute yourself? Or I don't know, do you have the ability to mute people? I think it's Katya just signed on. Everybody just fell in. Cool. So, um, okay, so when it comes to outreach, what you want to do at this step is try and deepen your connection and try to build more trust. If you are calling and you're not listening to what they're saying and you're just trying to give them a pitch, you're not going to have the same impact as if you're actually connecting with whoever it is that you're speaking to, whether it's a high school friend or whether it's a neighbor, you want to actually be authentic to you. You want to be authentic to trying and try and deepening that connection. So that's the second step is the outreach. Again, phone, calling on the phone is, or face-to-face -face is absolutely preferred, but if not, there are other things that you can do in this outreach step, depending on how you know that person. And we're going to get there in a little bit. Yeah. So when you're doing the outreach itself, do you want to like set up like, um, like little lunches or just like little catch up dates or something? Like yes. That? Okay. So that's a great question as far as like what you're doing and what you're saying and those outreach. It was just a phone call, phone call, but if you do the outreach, I'm assuming that. If somebody haven't seen for a while, you probably want to see each other and kind of catch up. Right? Yeah. So I don't know if you guys could hear on Zoom, but essentially what, what Roni is asking is, should you be calling and asking for an appointment, like a lunch date or a lunch meeting or a coffee meeting? I think it really depends. It depends on that person. It depends if they have an immediate need, if they're like, actually, Roni, um, thank you for calling and I, I need to list my home. Yeah, let's go and meet to can I come over today, see your house? Can we meet for coffee or for lunch? It really depends. If it's somebody that you're just checking in with, um, then I don't know that I would ask them for that. It depends on the person. If there's someone that has a lot of ability to get you referrals, then yes, it would be. Um, I have a slide in a couple of slides here where I talk about something called a referral lunch, which is a very specific event that you're having. But in general, Roni, I, I wouldn't ask for the appointment with everyone in your sphere. It's more like, hey, Courtney, how are you? By the way, I haven't spoken in a while. I, I saw on Facebook that you just got back from a trip. How was it? You know, by the way, um, can I talk business with you for a second? Like set it up to talk business. And then your, your script to her is, hey, listen, I'm in real estate now. Um, I'm in downtown Delray. My office also has an office in Fort Lauderdale. If you know anyone buying or selling, please think of me. Uh, it's I would love to have to um, any referrals from you. So you kind of like, see, it, it was just kind of a soft shift to let's talk business for a second. After I connected with her and made a comment on her most recent vacation. But if it is someone that has an immediate need, Roni, yes, face-to-face. -face. Yeah. I'd also like with past clients to sort of, you know, break up those kind of phone calls and like have other authentic contact is like if I'm showing a house in their neighborhood I might shoot them a message or a call right beforehand be like can I stop by just to say hello for a few minutes and I'll just like a five I had it on some like coaching thing they're like yeah pop by yeah pop by just like yeah. stop by five minutes catch up and yeah you could do a pop by text pop so yeah. I actually did a pop by phone call yesterday um this is somebody that a few years ago one of my good friends it was her mother's friend that she asked me to help buy a home so I helped him buy a home and I drove by yesterday. So I called him up. So I haven't spoken to the guy in, I don't know, two years, something like that. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm driving by. I just wanted to, how's everything going in the house? Well, guess what? He asked me to do a CMA for him because he wants to list it. What? So, so, um, so that's just an example. Like that was literally yesterday on the way to work. Um, and so had I not called him, he might have called the person who just did a direct mail. It's so if you look three slides ago, I said something about sales is about being in front of the person at the right time. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do is make sure you're always in front of the people within your sphere, that they always remember you. So it's the calling them every once in a while. It's the text that Tove just mentioned. It's the lunches that Roni goes on. All of that stuff is going to help that tree grow bigger, grow bigger and bigger. But again, it's about deepening the connection and building the trust, not just doing it in a way that doesn't feel authentic. Okay. 
Step three, I know that I keep saying this, but I have to say that consistency is the most important thing about this entire process. It's also about keeping track of your correspondence and knowing when you spoke to that person last. Um, because again, what we want to do is stay top of mind. In a minute, I'm going to talk about an actual plan that I'm going to give you guys that you can use. I meant to print it out and I forgot. Um, you can also put it in your business plan. And I think it's the third or fourth tab. There's a list of all of the things that you're doing. So remember, it's the first couple of days of whatever month in February, we're going to ask you, did you do those activities in January? That is your opportunity to open up that plan and say, oh, I meant to do three Popeyes or I meant to do, you know, 10 outgoing sphere phone calls or whatever it might be. So to keep yourself consistent, you've got to have it written out somewhere. You've got to have that list somewhere. Otherwise, we're not going to have any way to track it. So what step number is this? Three. That's step three. Okay. Ooh. What did I do? It's a very sensitive mouse. Okay. So I also want you to vary the medium. So um, like I, I always think calling is the best. Um, video chatting is good, but staying in front of them through social media is great. Doing a, a text. It doesn't necessarily any of those things, it doesn't matter which one of them you choose. Uh, it's also about meeting them where they are. I don't know about you guys, but I have certain people or friends that will only text me. So meet them where they are. If you call them and they shoot you a text, then just text them back, right? Remember, in this case, you're the one, they are your client. And so you've got to meet them where they are and you can vary it up as well. Um, as far as your sphere is something that you should constantly be adding to. If your goal should be to whether every month add a certain number of people to that sphere, whether it's from going out and meeting people at restaurants like Roni does, <laughs> or whether it's going to stuff that's happening within your own community or volunteering, you want to constantly be adding to your sphere and having a place where it's organized so you can add to that list. And then, of course, step six is repeat. Review your notes as far as when you last spoke to them, making sure that you're constantly reaching out to those same people and just repeating that process. And like I said a minute ago, it's staying consistent. So those that's just the general six steps of staying in contact with your sphere to make sure that you're in front of them when they have that need, that they're thinking about you when someone says, hey, you know anyone that is in real estate because I have to sell my home, right? You want to be that name that pops up in their head. Mm -hmm. All of these, these six steps are going to help you get there, but we're also going to talk about some tricks. Okay, so let's start with, what'd you say? I know, so, no, but you know what, this, this screen, it's not like that sharp, and so the white doesn't, it's kind of washed out. Okay, my question for you guys today, we're going to talk, we're going to start with social media. Who here posts about real estate on social media? Okay, so I have a lot of people raising their hand. I kind of want to, well, I can't see everyone here. I was going to count, but. Okay, can anyone give us some examples of social media resulting in business? Yeah. I posted lots of like just solds or just listed over the years that like friends in New York have forwarded to their parents mm -hmm. and then I've sold to them. Um, yeah, it's plenty of core. Like posted reviews that I got and, you know, some contact me that like, I want to buy in the next few months. Great. Yeah, I know for me, um, I, I don't post often about real estate, but when I do, it almost always results in a comment or something about it. So there's no question, right? We all can agree that social media works, right? So let me give you guys a scenario. Let's assume tomorrow we wake up and the first thing on the news says all social media now has a cost. If you want a Facebook account, it's now $1,000 a month. If you want Instagram, it's $2,000 a month. If you want to have a YouTube profile, it's X thousands a month. What do you think would happen? Yeah. Those systems would just die. I actually disagree. I think people would pay because that's how much it's worth. 
I think that it's free mark. It, okay. the, the exercise, it's right. not necessarily about whether or not somebody would pay. The reason I'm, I'm saying that example is to help, help you guys understand the dollar value of these mm -hmm. systems that are free. Mm -hmm. So if you're not using it, there's absolutely no reason. If you guys are in real estate and you don't have social media, you're in the wrong business. It's just that simple. You've got to get in front of people. You've got to remind people that you're in real estate constantly. But you also have to do it in a very strategic way. So we're going to talk about some of those, the, the do's and the do nots about social media. But again, I need, to, I need to really emphasize to you the importance of continuing to post on social media. And also, my next blurb here, you've got to have a plan. So a lot of people raise their hand that you guys all post. Does anybody have a plan? when it comes to their social media. Oh. It's not written, but you can go yeah. first. Well, I mean, I make sure that I post on one medium every single day. That's like my, so that way I'm not just blasting and annoying on certain like Facebook or Instagram. And then also every day I go through the groups like in, and that's like the contract I just got executed. Uh -huh. It's just from a, like the Del Rey community group. Wow, that's how you found somebody. Yeah, with somebody who was all pissed off at their apartment complex. And you know, of course, 30 realtors comment on there. Uh -huh. You have to realize that. But yeah. I always go through all the community groups. And so, so here's my question for you, Holly. What is your, what is your goal when it comes to social media? I mean, just to be in front of, like you said, to be in front of many people because I can reach more people on social media than I can on the phone, I feel like. Okay. So here's what I want to change about your plan, the plan that you have. Everyone that is on social media, we all need a goal, whether that is gaining more buyer clients, whether it's gaining more listings, whether it's increasing our following, whether it's increasing our engagement, it doesn't matter what it is. It just needs to be something and it needs to be smart which I don't know if you guys know what this, a SMART goal is, it has to be measurable and trackable. So what I did was I created a template that all of us can use to make sure, it's very simple, it's, it's maybe a page and a half. So this is not gonna cause anyone a huge amount of work, it should take 10 minutes to go through and just so you have an intention behind what you're doing on social media, which by the way is a fantastic way to continue to nurture your sphere without and wait for it to just kind of repeat and, and, and come back and, and help you, right? And benefit you. So the very first part, I wanna make sure everyone realizes social media is a version of prospecting. So Holly just told us about going onto a Facebook group and finding someone that had a need who didn't like their apartment complex, and she's now under contract for that person to buy a property. So as you can see, social media is prospecting. Just like when you call leads, it's the same thing. And just like everything else, you have to have a strategy, you have to have a goal, and you have to have a plan to, to achieve that goal. You can't just post randomly or just every once in a while. And I see some of you guys posting maybe like a listing or something, but it has to be a little bit more strategic. I want to push each and every one of you to make your social media posting and your, your usage better. I want it to result in actual business for you. So the first thing you're going to do in your social media plan is you're going to figure out what are your social media channels that you're going to be posting on. Is it all of the all four? Is it just one that you want to really highlight? I recommend at least doing Instagram and Facebook. I think those two are, are kind of the easiest, especially because they're owned by Facebook, by Meta, um, which means that all you got to do if you're posting on Instagram, just click the little box that says also post on Facebook. So you have to make sure. One and done. If you, have, if you have different accounts, you have to make sure it's the same. Yeah. Right? You have to make sure it's, it's the same. Absolutely. And by the way, we should all have consistent accounts, right? It should say, you know, Jordana Tobel Realtor on Facebook and on whatever my the way that I'm presenting myself, it should match. You want to have a consistent message as well. It also works with Twitter. Right? Twitter, that's a good one. I don't know why I didn't put that here. So let me add that. Okay, whatever your channels are, just identify them. These are my channels. Cool. The next is, I want you guys to think about your goal. Is it meeting more clients? Is it selling more houses? Is it expanding your sphere? Write down your goal in this little section here. And then underneath it, so this is what, you, what I need you to do, Holly, is, be, is create a SMART goal. So it's got to be specific. It's got to be measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So an example is my goal is to gain at least one new buyer client every single month from social media, 
right? Why not? By the way, the miraculous thing about goals, you set, you write them down and I swear to you, they somehow come true, right? It's proven. It does. It works. Mm -hmm. So make a goal. Brony, your goal is you want at least one listing or whatever it might be by posting strategically about real estate. Now, the key word of what I just said is strategically. So the next part of your social media plan, you've got to have content buckets. Here's what I mean. I, and I see some of you guys posting. I don't want to only see a picture of a house. That is not going to get you anywhere. Here, are, I wrote some samples of buckets down. It could be behind the scenes. It could be around town. It could be a day in the life. Um, it could be market information. It could be beautiful properties. Any of those things, it could be, um, I, this got deleted, real estate motivation, real estate mindset. Oops. Oh, no, I didn't. There it is. Let me fix this. Okay. So these five things, are those are your five content buckets. Now, what you can do, instead of having to kind of like rack your brain, oh, I'm supposed to post today. What should I post? My recommendation is to have this ongoing list, this plan that is written, one day brainstorm some ideas and then when ideas pop up add it here doesn't mean you have to post it in that moment but you could have a whole bunch of ideas so for example you could do day in the life an idea might be you know showing houses another idea might be you know um an open house post right just just start brainstorming different things that go into that bucket so a day in life is a good one for us as real estate professionals. You want people to be engaged. It's more engaging when you're taking a video and you're showing an actual open house in action versus, you know, let's say an empty living room. Or a showing or the new construction. Or a showing or new construction. However, when you do those posts, you have to tell them what they're looking at. So I've seen posts and even stories of people that are like showing a room. Okay, but... What, what, what is that? Where is it? What area is it in? What is the price? I, I need you guys to think about the person that's watching it. Are you engaging with them? So imagine this, imagine you see you're on someone's story and you see somebody touring at the inside of a property. There's no text. There's no, no one talking over it. Okay. So that's scenario one. Scenario two, that same exact video of the inside of the home, and it says, um, it's a beautiful East Delray location. This is what you can get, or what do you think this home is worth? And then maybe even having options that they can choose. Is it, you know, three to five? Is it five to seven? Is it seven to nine? What do you think is more engaging for the user? The first example where there's no text, there's no talk over, there's nothing. Or the second example? Well, good thing to touch on what you had that call. The guy was out snow blowing. <clears throat> yeah. He just went inside to look at beautiful properties down here where it was warm. I mean, you could go to the beach and shoot like palm trees. Right. Or something like that. Yeah. Any of those the snow any the of those things work. It also kind of goes into mm -hmm. the category of like a day in, in the life of a South Florida realtor. Right. So maybe maybe it's as simple as a picture of a palm tree and you write in your in your description a day in the life of a South Florida realtor. You know, are you in South Florida? If not. Or, or if no, right, yeah. right. What's what's your the snow, you know? right? But essentially, what I'm trying to say is that you need to have different content buckets. It's not just about one specific type, and it's about. And I need you guys to be a little bit more. I've seen some of your posts, and all of them could be better. All of them could be more engaging and give a little bit more information, so people think, "Wow, I actually want information about that house." I think I know someone that might want it. Now, if you didn't put that it was in East El Rey. And let's say they have, they know a friend that's looking in East Delray. And now they see this house, they're like, I don't know where that is. It's not that interesting. And I don't really, I mean, they're going to keep scrolling. The minute that trigger that, oh, wow, East Delray, my friend Roni's looking at East Delray. Hey, Courtney, what is that list price? Okay, now Courtney has my information and I just gave her that little opening to know that I'm looking to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So again, I need you guys to think about what it is that you're posting. I need you guys to use text, music. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, let me keep going, but content, I'm going to delete these things here. Does everyone understand what I mean by content mm -hmm. and the different buckets of content? I don't want to only see listings. I want to see everything. I want to see when you're showing a home. I want to see when you're at an open house. I want to see, wow, new restaurant in downtown Delray. And don't just post a picture of it. 
Another thing is I don't want you to worry too much. I think a lot of real estate professionals are trying to be this like glamorous image. It doesn't need to be glamorous, right? Like some of the best posts, like if you guys ever watch my, um, hold on, I have sweater fuzz in my mouth. <laughs> it's a very fuzzy sweater. Um, if you guys ever watch some of my, um, I'm Jordana the Florida broker. I have, um, I do some, some, dashboard confessionals, right? I'm going to stop doing I was told that it's dangerous. <laughs> I, I was told that people are like worried because I'm like, you know, driving the car and I'm like, ah, anyway, so I'm going to park. I'm going to park first, Rody, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to talk. But anyway, here's the point. The point is, I don't know if you guys notice, but I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect. <laughs> So let's, let's have a look at it. Crash while you're doing it. You'll get a lot more. No, I'm good. Like, no. Um, it doesn't matter. Those moments of me being authentic, I'm dropping the kids off. I'll talk about it. Oh, God, like whatever's going on in my world. Maybe I'm wearing like a baseball hat. My makeup isn't done. It doesn't matter. What matters is you being authentic. I put myself in front of the co camera constantly. And I'm really actually incredibly uncomfortable in front of the camera because I know that it works and it's authentic. I want it, I want my voice to be heard. So I don't, I, and a lot of you guys post like Maria, you post, but I want to see you. I want to see you at the, maybe at a closing table. Maybe it's a picture of you and your client with the description, you know, this month's 16th closing. If I see that post, right? So on someone in Maria's network and I see that she posted, she's a, there's a picture of her and a client at a signing closing table. Okay. And it says, my 16th closing in South Florida, Boca is on fire. Now I live in New York. And I see Maria, wow, you know what? I've always wanted to move to book. I'm a little bit interested. I might engage with her in that post. Another post is an example of maybe you post a picture of your two clients with the key or whatever, happy clients. That's not as engaging to me. But you say, okay, six. so here's what engaged me. My 16th closing. So my mind immediately is like, wow, that's a lot of closings. Boca Raton is hot. Wow, Boca is what I want, right? So let me reach out to her. Mm -hmm. that those little key words are going to trigger an engagement versus happy clients. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> you know, so I need you guys to be a little bit more thoughtful. Don't just post for the sake of posting. Same thing goes. We just talked about this. Don't just call for the sake of calling. You're wasting your fucking time. You really are. You have to have an intention. Sorry. I shouldn't curse. Um, but when it comes to, and that's when it comes to the content part of it, that's why I want you guys to think strategically, what is my content? So like for you, Marie, I'm picking on you a little bit, but I don't want just the list, just listed. I don't want that. I want to see you, but I want to see the day in the life of what you're doing. And I want you to put in there some, a description or of a text, if it's a story that engages me, like you'll post the restaurant, but where are you? What is the restaurant called? Is this downtown? Good. Okay. So that actually brings us perfectly to our next thing. I don't know if you guys know a geocoding strategy. It's all that means. It's a fancy way of saying that you're, when you post, you choose the location. So you post something today, you choose premier listings as the location. Okay. Now I know that Michael Conti works in Delray beach. I'm your contact from 10 years ago. I live in New Jersey or wherever you come from, New Jersey, I think. <laughs> Maybe in New Jersey? Yes, well, yeah, New Jersey, New York, yes. Okay, cool. Wherever it is, up north. Yeah. Now, you post a picture of this conference room. Hey, great meeting today. Jordana, you're awesome. Okay, the person sees it. That's nice. Versus you post it, you tag Delray Beach. Oh, you know what? I know someone that wants to buy in Delray Beach. I didn't know that Michael was a realtor in Delray Beach, right? When you start to tag it, now then you go, you went to Parkland the other day, mm -hmm. right? You post it, you post whatever the showing, you can even go online, go to the MLS, right, right click, save or screenshot the best picture of that home and say showing homes in Parkland today. What does that do for me? That What that does for me is it tells me Michael works in Parkland. And I didn't know that because yesterday you posted in Delray Beach. I thought you only worked Delray Beach. Now that conduct in New York, oh, I, I'm not going to reach out to um, Mike because I know that he lives in, he works in Delray, but I have a, a friend that wants to buy in Parkland. Do you see how geocoding, when you when you choose the location, is going to help people understand where you work? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Well, I was just going to say there's a few things because the geo is going to let the person know the location of where they at, the restaurant, wherever. Right. But if you use that hash, not the hash well, that's next. Quit, I was going to say hash, but I was talking about the app or whatever. Yeah. 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 When, when you tag, tag a restaurant or, or you actually tag the business restaurant. Or, okay. So, yeah. Business, 
and then they'll take your post and they'll repost it. And they'll repost it. Yeah, so that's a different. So geocoding is when you're actually choosing the location. There are other benefits to geocoding as well. What you're talking about is also a fantastic way to, if you're at the restaurant and you're posting and you post something like we went to throw, right? Mm -hmm. And I think all of us post something. I think I was more of a story thing. Mm -hmm. Did all, for those of us that posted, I don't know that all of us posted and put at throw. Right, throw, which is a new business. Oh, you guys put. That's oh, we did. Yeah. You guys put all, all of you guys put the address without necessarily tagging them. Right. I tag. Yeah. Right. When I tag them. They repost my. Story. Like you tag them in the body of the post. Right. Yeah. right. And that's what they actually. Like that's what they want. Live yeah. fish, they actually follow me now. Yeah. Because when I. Yeah, you post them, about it. Yeah. Yeah. I post about them. No, they follow me. So I got throw <laughs> and I got throw. <laughs> But, but still, it's a little different than geocoding, but but it's uh, when you tag the location or the restaurant or the venue that you are, absolutely. There's also a hashtag strategy, which I wrote about back in the, in here. Okay. So the template I just showed you guys, that was it, by the way. It was what, like six different sections? I want you guys to do the thing that all of us are going to put off, sit down and actually do it and just think for a couple minutes about what is my goal, Right. Do you want to gain more sales? Do you want to get, and, and then be smart about it, right? I want at least three new email addresses for my sphere emails but from social media, or I want at least one listing appointment, whatever it is, figure out a measurable goal that you have, meet, getting one, writing one buyer offer. What's your feeling on like the amount of non-real estate related things that should be mixed into there. I am um, I think that that's fine. Yeah. I think no, I, I think like over the years, the times where I've been like the most diligent about doing like 30% family stuff, 30% yeah. interest stuff, 30% yeah. real estate stuff, those are the times where the real estate stuff had the most engagement. Yeah, I totally agree. But when I'm like just posting real estate stuff, no, it's boring. They drop down to like 10 likes per yeah. thing instead yeah. of like so, a whole bunch of comments. Yeah. You know? I've been told this about a three to one ratio. Yeah, that, that's what I've always done like 30, 30. So so here's the deal, you guys. It's whatever it is that's important to you. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, Harley Davidson motorcycles, is it yoga? What is important to you? And post that. If it's your granddaughter or your niece or nephew, whatever it is, post them. Be You want to be authentic to you. That's what people work with you because they like you. And if they know that, okay, Michael likes to go for runs on the beach in the morning, it doesn't matter what you're doing. So I absolutely think that you should be posting about who you are, yeah. your personal stuff. Just make sure that when you do post your real estate stuff, it's different right. parts. Of, it's the different the content buckets. So you're mixing it up. It's not just one type of real estate post yeah. and that you've got information in there that's going to be a trigger to get somebody interested. Don't have the boring descriptions. Take a minute and think about it. Also, there is no, people on oh, her. No, you're good. And you're sharing. I was going to say that there is also like KCM that they posted for me. Or, yeah. So, you know, they do Facebook and a lot of people read my, because that's a little bit longer. Yeah. What so what, what Maria is talking about is um, keeping current matters that will post on your behalf. You know, I think that that's okay as long as you are mixing in you. Remember, you don't want the generic real estate stuff. You, you want, we want to know about Maria. We want to know about when you guys, when you and Lewis go out and Lewis is singing. I want to see that. That's interesting. Well, there's not a lot of good, like, because uh, you know how they do a lot of, um, you know. Market yeah, infographics, yeah. yeah. But again, I just want to make sure that's a, that's good. Yeah. That's one content bucket. But that can't be the only, if you're only, po like Tobe was just saying, right? If you only post market infographics from Keeping Current Matters, yeah. your, your your engagement is going to drop. Eventually, you get unfollowed. Just like if yeah. someone's only posting pictures of their dog every single day. Right. Yeah, they're going to get unfollowed. No matter unfollow. how cute their dog is, eventually you unfollow because right. you're sick of seeing the same thing every day. But here's what I want it's to point out. Good. What the goal, the goal of today happen. is to help yeah. everyone stay in front of our sphere. Social media is a very easy way to stay in front and nurture. When I say nurture, it's reminding them constantly that you're in real estate, what you're doing is interesting. And by talking about real estate or, or, or showing that, or maybe talking about experiences. Like for example, when you listed that home the other day and you or you had like 26 mm -hmm. offers, I don't know. I think anyone that is, that is a homeowner or that is considering buying a home would want to know that. That's interesting. Wow, there's 26 offers and he successfully sold it. It went for over asking. I'm selling, maybe I should ask you. So I need you guys to be a little bit, like think a little bit deeper about what you're posting. Um, 
But again, it's, it's about staying in front of social media. Now I wanna talk about hashtags for a second. I have a couple of tricks here. So how's everyone doing on uh, Zoom? Oh, Juan, do you have your hand raised? What does that mean? Oh, hey Juan, okay. <laughs> okay, this is one of my favorite little hacks. This hack is a great part to put into your social media plan. And what this hack says is, all of, I know for me, I have, a I don't know, a few, a 2000 or something Facebook followers because Facebook is an, a little bit of an older platform. It's been around for longer. What that means is I have people on there from high school and elementary school and college and camp and trips and whatever. Now, if I go into my Facebook and I, every single person that is my contact and I direct message them, Hey, Sherry, how are you? I saw, I wanted to wish you a happy new year. It looks like you're living in Florida now. How are things going? By the way, I'm in real estate. Right. So my point being, so this is somebody maybe who I don't feel comfortable calling. I haven't spoken to them since, you know, I graduated college last year. Um, <laughs> um, but I'm, I know them well enough that I can direct message them, which is pretty harmless. Right. Meaning through the messenger, whether it's on Instagram, or whether it's through Facebook. So I, I, I have a story about this, which I think I've told before. Um, I, there was an agent that, that um, switched industries. She was working in, as, as a nursery school teacher, grew up in Boca and knew everybody in Boca. She worked at B'nai Israel, I think it was. And she's like, I know everyone in Boca, but I can't for the life of me get a real estate sale. I can't meet any buyers or sellers. And I'm like, well, how is that possible, Jenny? You know everybody. So I told her to do this. She went into her Facebook, she messaged somebody. The person responded, I had no idea that you were in real estate. I'm actually meeting someone tomorrow to list my home. Why don't you come tonight? Yeah. She left the office, went to that house. It was a $900,000 listing in seasons. This is a few years ago. And all, all because of the direct, she wasn't comfortable enough to call, but she direct messaged them, right? So anyone who is your friend on Facebook, you should be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And my, and you can't, and you can also copy and paste, just be careful about how many you do. I think when you get to a certain number, the mess, they think that you're like a bot or something. So maybe do a couple a day. Maybe this is part of your plan and you consistently message people that are your social media friends and you say to them, how are you? You comment on them, you connect with them. And by the way, if you know anyone, anyone buying or selling, or I wanted to let you know that I just joined a company in downtown Delray, or I wanted to let you know that we're opening another location mm -hmm. in Broward. If you have any Broward, and if you know anybody in the Fort Lauderdale area that is looking to buy or sell, we can help. All right, I promise you, if you guys do it to every single person that you know on social media, I promise you it will result in something. A buyer or a seller, Pro I promise. If you do it and you don't get something, let me know. Now, are you just talking about the people you actually know or people that follow your Facebook page? I'm talking about every single person that follows you. They know you if they follow you, right? Well, I mean, I've done ads like up in New York and people will just start following them because they want to see houses. Yeah, but so what? Hey, it's Michael. How are you? I noticed you follow my page, okay. right? I want you to actually take the time to connect with that person, okay. right? Be careful with not a lot of real yeah, so you're right. I, I, I have no problem. If they're in New York, I have no problem. Well, I want them. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Yeah. So I get, Has anyone done this and seen it work other than me? What do you guys, is this something that you guys think would, would work for you? Yeah. Okay. My next tip. There's a Facebook bot. I can send you guys a link. It's, it's a happy, it's a birthday bot. And what this bot does, and I know because I got this from a realtor. And it said, hey, Jordana, wishing you a happy birthday. We're going green this year. What is your email so I can send you a card? And it wasn't the person. It wasn't, it wasn't actually him. It was a bot that was, cool. which is really cool. So what that does is first of all, re-engages. So now they're a little bit more comfortable reaching out to you because you just reached out to them and now they have a real estate need. Oh, you know what, Roni? I need you, right? So this bot will you just give it access to your Facebook and it will message on your behalf, mm -hmm. right? What a great way to A, wish somebody a happy birthday, B, ask them for their email. Now you add them into sync and every single month, they're gonna get something from you. Some communication, a newsletter, a market report, happy holidays, something or other. This is one of those things. You start doing this now. And I promise you, like the little sapling that's growing, it's gonna start to grow. Leaves are gonna start to sprout. Hey, Mike, you know what? Do you have a house I can buy? I'm looking for something in uh, East Dome or whatever. That's what's gonna start happening. Let's talk hashtags for a second. 
A lot of you guys are posting. I don't see a lot of hashtags. I don't see the right hashtags. So think about hashtags like keywords. So you guys all understand what hashtags mean, right? So for example, if I'm looking to buy in Boca Raton, and maybe I live up north, okay? Or I live in California. Um, what I might do is I'm going to go and look for the hashtag Boca Raton Real Estate, and I'm going to follow that hashtag. That means anytime anybody posts with hashtag Boca Raton, it's going to appear in my feed. That's what that means. Now you can use this strategically. So first, I'm gonna I'm going to hold on. There's a chat. Is that you? Follow That's the amazing. hashtag. Yeah, you can follow the hashtag. Yeah. So um, so Roni, it's, it's not a page. It just makes it a way to group well, together similar information yeah. that will then appear, right? It's so the file tag on top. Of right. File. So like, let's say like I'm traveling, right? And maybe I'm going to I'm going to New Mexico. And, I, and before I'm going to New Mexico, I want to know what's happening locally in, in Santa Fe. I'm going to go and I'm going to follow Santa Fe and see what is popping up, what's happening in the area, what are the new restaurants. That works for real estate. Somebody is thinking about buying in real estate. They want to know if you hashtag new listing, you're going to see new listings. So, but you again, you have to be strategic. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys some tools. First and foremost, you guys need to have groups of hashtags that you're going to use. These four, I have four links on here. And these will all help you guys create hashtags. So for example, what you're going to do, can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if I type in South Florida real estate, did I spell it right? I didn't. All right. It just gave me the most popular hashtags that I should be using. So now you're going to copy and paste it. So what I recommend doing is having different groups of hashtags. So for example, you might have a group of hashtags for a new listing. You might have a group of hashtags for a particular area. You have those hashtags saved in a note. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with copying and pasting hashtags. It doesn't matter. Let me tell you something what I do. I've been doing this a lot because I can't put 20. It takes too long. So I copy and paste. And there's anything you would, if I uh, post something about winter, I just go winter and copy everything. Well, sometimes I change one or two because I want them to be. Well, I'm going to, and then my next slide, I have something that you can do, Maria, that's going to actually well, no, not that it's easier. It's going to increase your the number of hits that you get as far as people that see it. And it's going to help you gain more followers. It's going to help you have your posts seen by more people. So these are four free hashtag generators. And again, take the time that when you're posting, let's say today, you're posting about something that we're doing. Maybe it's realtor life or you're posting about this meeting. So when you post about this meeting or anything that has to do with you improving yourself, educating yourself as a realtor, you should have 20 posts, 20 hashtags, 20. at least 20, 10 to 20 that, that apply to whatever that post is. So, yeah. So that way, for example, like Roni, you post a picture of us at this meeting, right? Or I walk out and you say, hey, Jordana, can you snap a photo with me? And then you, you post it and say, you know, great meeting by the incomparable Jordana. <laughs> Jordana, the Florida broker, and then you do hashtag realtor life, hashtag improving myself, hashtag entrepreneur, hashtag whatever, whatever. Okay, cool. Now, even when I see that post, first of all, I'm thinking, oh, look at that. Roni's working on himself. Roni's making himself better. Roni works hard as an agent. Let me ask Roni for real estate advice, because look at this. He's constantly working on himself, right? And you can see how that goes into the category of when I talk about content buckets. It's not the same. When you posted that image of me and you at this meeting, that's a different type of post than you showing a beautiful home that you just listed. So it attracts somebody. It's, it's interesting. It's a little bit more engaging. And again, most of these things, once you do it, it's, it shouldn't be in an, an, a big time suck, right? You have hashtags saved that you now can just access. So maybe like realtor education or maybe like realtor life is one note in your phone. You go to the hashtag generator, you copy those, you put it in there. Anytime you post anything about, or maybe like networking, you're a big networker, right? So maybe you have a note with 20 hashtags about networking. And what will happen is people that follow that hashtag will see you and then they're going to like you and follow you if it's a good post, if they like it. So let's talk about, does everyone understand about um, the hashtag strategy that I'm talking about? Yeah. Well, Matt's saying put your most used hashtags in your notes. Yes, that's what I just said. In your notes? 
and your notes in a phone. That way you can copy and paste it. Oh. Yeah, Lee, to answer your question, I'm going to share a link to the Facebook bot that you guys can all sign up for. In my, def I, I didn't um, actually, I don't use it. I researched it and I found one. So if you guys do use that Facebook bot, first of all, I'm going to give you the um, disclaimer that I don't know if it works or not. Like it's just something I researched. So if you guys use it, it doesn't work, don't blame me. But um, that idea, the idea, uh, um, the idea of the automation is what I'm interested in. The idea that somebody can log in or a bot can do it for you and gain that email address. You have another question? Oh. I was just going to say hashtags are probably like 50% of your posts. But you have to change the hashtag. You can't change the hashtag. Yeah. 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 Well, that's why, what it, but it's, say, it goes with the content bucket. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if you have five different general contact content mm -hmm. buckets, and then you're also mixing in between that, like, let's say other personal stuff. You're always going to have different things that you're posting mm -hmm. and different hashtags. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about a hashtag strategy. So now that you have your five different, you have notes in your phone with the hashtags you're going to use when you post about new listings, when you post about realtor improvement or realtor education, you have that safe. What I want you to do, this is called the waterfall strategy. So in order to get you guys to rank higher in lower hashtags, sorry, if you do this right, you will rank higher in the lower hashtag, which means that you will show up in the higher hashtags. So this strategy is called the 10 to 5. Let me explain. I know it's a little bit confusing. So what you're going to do first, you're going to find 10 hashtags that have under 5,000 posts, even low, the lower, the better. So the way that you do that is you make a very specific hashtag. So for example, it could be like a neighborhood. So let's say you have a, you're showing homes in Lake Ida, the neighborhood. So maybe what you find is Lake Ida real estate. That's going to have a lot less people that, that follow that, that hashtag, or sorry, a lot less posts yeah. of Lake Ida real estate. That's going to have a lot less than Delray beaches or what about if you use Florida real estate. There's going to be millions of people, millions of posts that have the Florida real estate. If you do Delray Beach, it's going to have less. If you do a neighborhood, Lake Ida, it's going to have even less. Mm -hmm. So what this post, what this strategy does is when you, so you do 10 hashtags for a lower number, and then you add five hashtags for a higher number, like over a hundred thousand or over a million, right? So if I just did hashtag real estate, there's going to be over a million people that have posted with the hashtag real estate. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do in this strategy that I was explaining, I was trying to tell you a minute ago, Maria, is that when you, what's going to happen now is you're going to start to appear in the top post section of that lower hashtag. So if you posted Lake Ida real estate, and then when there's a top post and there's a recent post section for a hashtag, because there's so few hashtag people posting with the hashtag Lake, Lake Ida real estate, you're going to show up. Gonna show up. Yeah. And then what's going to happen is now when the higher hashtags go, oh, well, let's show Roni because he showed up in a top post in this lower hashtag. So strategically, and you can research this. This is, this is like a real, I spent. I was just going to ask you where you get your information. I just I'm like, um, I've been reading and teaching myself and watching videos um, to try and understand and help you guys understand how we can be strategic, how we can have a plan. I'm trying to push you guys to be better. So I've just been researching and reading about it and watching other videos and watching other experts talk about it. Um, you know, so that's a good example of that great hashtag the schools because they don't have a lot. Of that's a great idea. So schools. I love that. So if you have a if you have a listing in a good school district, the guy listed a home that was in the in um, the elementary school is called Calusa. It's that is like everyone loves Calusa. That's a, whenever you say the word Calusa, Roni, like immediately somebody says, "I love that school." So if I post a listing and I put Calusa Elementary, I promise you there are going to be some buyers that are following that because they want their kids to go to Calusa Elementary. Oh, hey Holly, is that a listing at Calusa? Yeah, it is actually just sold, but I can help you find another one. So you can see how using the right hashtags is going to get you more exposure. It's going to have the right people. So this is not just about you guys posting. Oh yeah, sure. I'm, I'm on, on social media. Uh, uh. This is about having a specific goal. My goal, your goal, Maria, should be to get more listings from your social media. So you have to push, you got to push yourself a little bit more to get to that next level, not just posting haphazardly, right? No, no, I'm, I'm just thinking I actually did a post and I did it and I put even her mother's happy. Right. And I got 
a lot of responses right. from that, and mm -hmm. it's kind of clicking white. Which, by the way, her mother saw it and called me and told me that she saw. She sent me the Facebook post of. Was she happy mom. about that? She goes, "I love this." And I'm oh, like, I love like, right. But she was a overbearing mom, so I was just. I was actually being sorry. Yeah, just, it's <laughs> funny. Yes, yeah. it's, it's personal. It's personal. Post, but the thing is, the thing is, it's personal. People who know you, right, will know that that's. Sarcasm, you're, you're making, you know what I'm saying? Right. Not making fun, right. but you're just, exactly. just being yourself. So that's the thing when it comes yeah. to a lot of these posts, right. you really have to make sure, just like Jordana says, you have to be authentic. You know, yeah. if you start posting stuff like randomly that's out of the blue, everybody's going to be like, what? This, this okay, so I, I totally agree. And that goes back, if you think about the six steps that I said when we first started, right? What I, I also want to remind you guys, and one of those, what part of that is being authentic, it is being personal, it is about deepening the connect, connection and making, making it so that you trust, the people trust you and they want to work with you. But let's go back a step further. Remember step one, when I, about this, this idea of building and nurturing your sphere is writing the list of all the people that you know. So what about you go through your list and you realize, oh my God, I have like three neighbors that I don't even I don't know. They're not, they don't even know that I'm in real estate and maybe they don't, they don't follow me. And I don't, I don't see them on social. You go onto social media and you follow them. They will follow you back. Oh my God, Michael's in real estate. I didn't even know that. He looks, he's always running around. He looks so busy. He must be a good realtor. Maybe I'll use him. So my point being, is I want to go back to the point, the, the entire goal of this meeting is to help you guys stay in front of your sphere. This is a social media is a really easy way to do that. And if you follow the list, these steps, I promise you it will work. It will result in more business. So when you do that, when you make your list of all the people in your sphere, your nail dresser, your plumber, your handyman, whoever it might be, in your case, your handyman is your husband. So you don't need to put him into, so, <laughs> um, but, but my point is, is that then you go and you cross reference it. Do, are all these people following you on social? Are you following them? You're going to grow your sphere you're going to grow your ability to nurture them you can put them into sync as an email now you're they're going to get emails from you you have to kind of slowly add do all these things together to make it all snowball into the the result of creating a referral machine for the people that are in your sphere oh these are my notes to desiree uh <laughs> what does this say oh reels um okay so I personally don't even know how to do reels, but I do know that they're important. Yeah, I see them and I, the, re, the reason why reels is a heavy focus, by the way, is because um, they're starting to, they allow ads on reels. Mm -hmm. And of course, because TikTok is popular, now you can repost on Instagram, the TikTok reels that are created. Um, essentially what a reel is, if you don't know, it's a short form video. You can also do pictures now. Um, so excuse my notes but like i said these are just my notes about this slide oh, what is it said have Jordana refresh the page oh <laughs> but now you guys see the behind the scenes oh look at that <laughs> okay now you can see the behind the scenes that all this pretty like these presentations like i don't do any of them <laughs> hold on look at how much prettier this is <laughs> okay um all right, a couple of tips this is this is a bit this is a big little a big little this is a <laughs> This is a big hack. Thank you. There you go. Um, if you use the music of what is currently trending, so have you guys seen some of those trending songs, right? If you use that trending song, you will show up more. Oh, yeah. Because what Instagram is trying to do or TikTok is trying to do is they're trying to create a trend, something that's viral. Mm -hmm. So that means that if everyone in this room posts something with a particular song and then Courtney goes and posts that another something with that song she's going to now get more exposure versus if she didn't use that same song mm -hmm. i have to get my i gotta pay my kids dues <laughs> seriously can i pay them uh, uh, <laughs> seriously on that note i was actually gonna bring up the same thing i if there's anybody here or I would happily pay them to sit down but, and have a set up and do it. Well, the only stuff. problem with that is, and there, there, I, I've used companies to, to do that in the past, and it's, I just don't no, think no, it's don't not, it's not your voice. voice. So you can do it. Like you can have your kid post. I don't want a company. What I want, like you telling me, I'll save it in the notes. By the time I figure out how to save in the notes, I just wasted three hours out of my day. You don't know how to save a note in your phone. No, um, with all this, I'm, I'm real, I'm horrible. I know it. it's my, I would just as soon pay someone X amount of money, say for an hour, to sit down, show me how to set it up, and I'm done. I would, and I'm thinking there's other people. Yeah, so you know what? Here's the 
here's what I'm, well, here's what we can do. We can absolutely, this would be a class that the marketing people would, like maybe yeah. Desiree could do the class if you're listening. I don't know how to do like the music on the story. Right. 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 Okay, so yeah. I'm glad you guys said that. We can do like a social media 101 and help you guys learn some of these things, yeah, how to create a like new- 99. Because, yeah, yeah, not so <laughs> social media for dummies, yeah. you know, the- yeah. Uh, yeah. Using your um, social media. But remember, to, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so the purpose of today's class, again, is to help you guys stay in front of your sphere, and social media is part of that, so this is not a social media class, right. with that being said, I, I'm, I'm hearing the feedback, and no problem, we'll, we'll schedule something so you guys can sit for an hour, definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely cool, uh, <laughs> okay, we, yeah, we can do that. No problem. So, in addition, okay. In addition to social media, right? When it, I want you guys to also understand, there's value. In, there are other ways that you could get in front of people: letters, direct mail, postcards. Um, whether it's once a quarter. By the way, you guys all know that in our marketing center, you can easily go in and choose. An, a neighborhood and buy um, a list of addresses and send whether it's direct mail whether it's letters that you print you can manually print them i've done that before um there was a community where with only 100 homes it's called les jardin in boca and i did a mailing and i got like three people that called me that were thinking about listing their home which is a huge rate of return mm -hmm. and all i did was i printed out i didn't do a postcard i printed out a letter i said i and i had a i have a buyer looking in your neighborhood so my point being, social media is great, letters and postcards into a particular area so people, so now you're growing your sphere. Because guess what? When I got those three phone calls, now I put them into my database. These are three people. Maybe I go on social media and I friend request them. So they, now they get to know me, right? It's an easy way for them to get to know me. I just met them over the phone. They said, hey, Jordano, I'm listing my home in a few months. Would you come and do a listing? I'm sure I will. Now I'm going to friend request them. Oh, look, now they're going to see that I have two kids that maybe go to the same school as their kids. And okay, now we're building trust. You see how it kind of all goes together? More for like working your sphere rather than building it. But I used to write like one or two handwritten notes. That's my next card, my send, next slide. And yeah. send them out and people would get them. And it's, it stands out so much that people yeah. would like, post them on social media and tag me and be like, wow, look, someone sent me a handwritten right. note. Right. I have another and agent that did. Um, really work. So the handwritten notes really, really works. Um, I, I know an agent that did that to um, Boca Bath and Tennis. There are a lot of homes in Boca Bath and Tennis. She hand wrote however many cards and guess what? Her list, she got like a $2 billion listing from that handwritten Right. So that's, this is part of building your sphere. And remember, we all have a business plan with tabs that say all the things we're going to do. So this doesn't have to be every single month, by the way, let's be real. But once a quarter, can you sit down and maybe print out and sign, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, maybe 100, whether it's letters or whether it's handwritten cards? Absolutely. Will that result in you working your sphere and building and having new contacts for your sphere? Absolutely. Like and Christmas cards. Right. Like two hours it's, with a glass of wine for like absolutely. I made my kids, I did one and I made my kids stuff the envelopes and they actually kind of liked it. I made my daughter write the addresses on. You can also print labels really easily. So letters and direct mail postcards are another way. Handwritten cards, like you said, you got in front of me with that. Um, I have you has anyone ever done a referral lunch? I love this idea. So the referral lunch is when you ask people that have referred to you business. So let's say it's two or three people that you know would get along. So it's not just one person, it's a, a, a few. Um, and you take them for lunch and when the bill comes, you pay. And you say, I'm paying. And you say, because I, I love the referrals that you send me, just send me a referral this year, that's all I ask, right? Pay me back with referrals. Yeah. How am I doing with time? Okay, I'm almost done. Um, get involved with your community, volunteering. I know as an office, by the way, something we're doing in this quarter, Desiree's working on getting us set up with Habitat for Humanity. Did she talk to you yet? About um, um, doing an event together. But you guys can also do events. I know like Rona, you do a lot um, with local stuff. Like all of those are great ways. The problem is that most of those are realtor events, but we can do other events. Well, the big thing I want to do, I'm kind of raising, I mean, I don't know if you're really 
responsibility, but we keep asking. We need to we need to sign up. Yeah, we want to join the con he has a contact over there. So we yeah. join, join, join what? the chat the chamber. I told you yes. Yeah, so no, no, I'm not waiting for the chamber. Oh. Yeah, we can do that. The then you can go to whatever you want. Give everybody yeah. know look. So you join the chamber if I stop to join us right there. Oh. Right? So if I join by myself, it's like three twenty. Very expensive. Yeah. If I do it with you, I think it's like Discount. I'm in. Like Send me the info. We'll do it. You can also join your HOA. There, there. That's not. That's free. If you want to be, a, if you want to serve on your HOA, or at least go to the meetings. They ask me. <laughs> oh wait. Do I have to? This was. This was my. These are my notes. It's not very pretty, but the the sentence works. So this is my last slide. Even if you're not seeing results, the minute that you're posting, or the minute that you're calling, or the minute that you're Writing the letter, stick with it. I promise the results will come. Mm -hmm. It's like I said in the very beginning, it's about being consistent and doing it all the time and doing all these different things, right? From social to the phone calls that you're calling people to the text to the email blasts to the events to the face. It's a whole combination of things. But what I want you guys to take away from this class is that you got you have to have some version of a plan and you have to have some version of a goal. Mm -hmm. My goal is this from all of my activities one new buyer per month, one new contact, one listing, or more than that. Maybe I want to make three offers every single month from all of my networking events. Like that stuff is something like, Roni, you do a lot of networking. If you just put it down and make the goal, make it actually set a plan for yourself, you'll see the results are infinitely better when you do that. That's my biggest takeaway from every single one of you guys. Okay, I'm over by three minutes. Um, any questions? Thank you. What do you guys think? Was it? Did you guys get good information? Anything that you guys will use? Was this class helpful? Was all of my research worthwhile? I have a question on the social media ad. Say you do an ad, like you want to do an ad in New York, right? About whatever the weather's nice here, whatever. Do you put the hashtags in the ad as well? Like say, oh, you know. No, that's an ad. That's that's when you're that's sponsored, which right, is so which is different. The post, but so we wouldn't put those hashtags in there. So oh, um, I don't. The answer to that people's groups you're talking about like from your business page because yes yeah, so on your business page you want to do like in new york hey you know tired of the cold you know whatever tired of cold weather you know whatever so uh, you put hashtag cold in new york hashtag freezing your ass off no, I would and then put in what then you do, do your do, ad what you do is hashtag new york hashtag florida hashtag sunshine hashtag something like that because the person from new york is probably going to see it okay right because it's, they you know, but do you put the hashtag so yeah, as far as to answer your no, question about the paid ads, it's it's that's a whole different can of worms. Like yeah, I don't know that I can. I'm not. Paid ads, like boosted, boosted. Oh, boosted. You can only do from a business page. Right. Well, we should all well, have I business see. pages. I, you don't I mean, have one. I only use personal. I think it's. I think you get a much better result. I used to use a business page. Yeah. I think you get a much better result just like using a strategy on your personal page because, like you said, people right. want to work with you. People want to work not with right. the company you work right. for necessarily. Not anything else. They want to work with like. Use. They want to get to know, like, right. know personally. Yeah. So, other than that question, which I can't really answer, yeah. does anybody else have any questions? What What were your biggest takeaways? Did anyone learn something? Anything? Please. <laughs> I learned a lot about the hashtag. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and just like, uh, just like she was saying, you know, what I really liked is that uh, the waterfall strategy you're talking. About, yeah. Having like. Um, yeah. Lower, lower, lower hashtags. Ones, yeah. Because you'll you'll get shown more on those. Yep. And then you just put the bigger ones on there to kind of like boost right. boost your uh what is it uh yeah apps to get more exposure. Yeah. And cool. then um the other thing I wanted to just touch on in regards to like the content itself. So what I'm doing, because you know, for this the content buckets, yeah. For this buyer that I'm working with right now. He's not so sure about country clubs, but you know, I've had to spend like three days calling country clubs. Oh my gosh. And stuff like that. Right. So but a lot of them were like, oh, if you want to just do a tour, I know he's not here yet. Right. You yeah. can just come do a tour. So sometimes we can like reach out to these communities. Yeah. Uh, especially if we're like new to the area or whatever the case may be. If you're new, it's even better. You know, mm -hmm. because it's like I'm new to the area, I just moved here. But I would like to get a little bit more information about country club or whatever. And they're going to have somebody to give you a tour. And then during that tour, guess what? I'm over here at Boca Raton. Take business to beautiful golf course. Right. Tag, 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 right. Right. Mm -hmm. So small things, going to a restaurant. Yeah. New place opens up. 
you know, um, you know, I'm here, here's the owner, or here's the manager, blah, 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 blah. you know, this is a great place to eat, you know, if you need more information, talk to me, hashtag, you know, so I just feel like there's a lot of, especially for the new people, just walk around and just um, talk to people, most people will be willing to talk to you. Absolutely. Even if you go to your big, big right. place. Whatever. Yeah, just talk. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to send you guys out the template, the social media plan. Take a couple minutes, please, and think about, you know, what are your goals for your social media? Is that part of your, uh, how you're going to nurture your sphere? Um, make that list of all the people in your sphere and then reach out to them, direct mail, make those phone calls, all of that stuff. I promise you, you will have results. You just have to actually do it. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.